Good afternoon again from Yanni B T V TikTok. Sending loads of love to you all as usual. Now, part one this morning of my most dangerous men. We now move into part one series of my most evil men that I ever met, right? So this guy's name is Victor Willoughby for part one, right? And the first time I met him was in a sea cat in the early days probably about 1991, 92, in Wayland HMP. Now, he was there. He had about three or four cronies around him, probably uh, manipulating, getting a little gang together, and they just used to all hang about together, right? During that time, me, George Constantino, Colin McIntyre, Spencer, um, Batman, loads, loads, of, loads of men were in Wayland at this time. Now, the moral code of the street the holy grail the true crime bible so to speak right along the years i've bet maybe i've bet so many men that profess or give out the presentation that they wear these rules close to their heart um, that thou must not harm women thou must not rape thou must not harm children thou must not my, 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 <laughs> thou must not grasp um, thou must do deals properly and do it straightly and fly straight um, amongst a few other commandments that were written by who from the beginning of time well I'll tell you one thing this new young generation don't stick to none of that and I'm yet yeah. no in fact I probably find about five to ten men that stuck to the true crime holy bible not the real one right um, and stuck to it and believed in it and abided by it in my whole criminal history, you have to have failed one. Thou shall not hit your missus either as well, right? And thou shall not hit the old or harm the elderly and children, like we said. It can go on and on and on, right? Um, but anyway, I met many men that spoke, like, when you see them. Ah, he's a wrong one, mate. We can't put up with that. Ah, he's a rapist. He's a nonce, mate. Nah, he's got to get done. We've got to do him and all that, right? Right. You know, when we was at school when we was younger and someone used to fart and they used to say, whoever smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> Not saying it's actually you know, factual 100% of the time with what I'm saying now. Um, but this guy, Victor Willoughby, Will right? He was all right, I thought. And he kind of had me fooled for a little while um, during this time. Um, they went and done a supposed sex offender on the landing in full view of everyone. Hitting him with glass, hitting him with um, wood, hitting him, beating him so bad, black and blue, where he was screaming, the man, right, on the landing, saying, nah, he's a nonce, and he's a sex offender, and da 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 They battered him, right? So, we got away with it, and all that, yeah. The next day, the screws put up a, a picture on the poster board, and it gave a, a, what that guy, who was sadly suffering badly in hospital, his previous convictions and what he was in for, he wasn't in for a sexual offence, right? This was all led um, by Victor Willoughby. George Constantino used to say to me, yeah, I'm not really feeling him, you know? You know what I mean? Because he always used to preach the moral high ground. He's wrong, he's no good, da 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 he's a nonce, I know it definitely. So I saw him. I said, yeah, but you got it wrong. Because the geezer's not a sex offender. He goes, oh, oh, that's what they're probably saying, the screws, right? So he's done somebody else. Right? I still said to him he was wrong because they put his previous convictions up there. He goes, listen, yammy and all that. I said, all right, cool. he done someone else with hot water, right? Coming out of the dinner queue one time, right? I said to him, he'd done it on his, with, a cup, with one geezer. And when he came later on in the evening, I said, so what, what's this one? He said to me, he's a sex offender, definitely. I goes, what do you know that's different from the last thing you did? Um, where they said that he wasn't. He goes, what we did this time is we went into his cell and requested his paperwork, his statements, his charge sheet and all that. When he said, no, I haven't got one in there, in the cell, they tore it apart and they found it and he was a sex offender and he got that one right, right? The moral high ground, yeah, 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 I get you, right? So that was that. So that, that was um, the one-two between me and him. The reason why I do this video and saying he's evil, I used to look into his eyes sometimes and I used to think, is this guy for real? But he did it so well. He did do it so well, like he was on staff, like everybody was rating him. I'm not sure what he was in there for at that time. But if we fast forward another, what, 91 to 95, 96, maybe a little bit later, I can't be too sure, but I know that if you look Google it, it's probably out there. 
I was down the block in a long called London jail. I'm in the exercise yard in a cage. He's in the cage opposite me, right? And on the news, coming out on the news, Victor Willoughby had just been convicted of 30 to 100 rapes, right? I think he was from North London. So, obviously, with that news in my head already, I had to see him in the cage. So the case must have been about two days prior to me seeing him in the opposite cage on the exercise yard down the block. So I said to him, Victor, he said to me, yeah, me. I said, what are you saying? I said, I just see your name plastered all over the news as being a rapist. Um, and dozens and dozens of them as well. He looked at me and said, yeah, I mean, listen, I've been stitched up. I said, stitched up? But there's six different something DNAs at those crimes belongs. No, they fitted me up, yeah, I mean, they've done me over. I swear to you, you knew I wasn't like that and all that. You remember, I used to bash them up and all that. Hold on a minute. Right. This, over the years, I saw this feature quite a lot, who, who talks, people that constantly talk and set it off and all that often have things to hide as well. And the majority don't, of course. They don't like that kind of offender and all that. Um, but about two days later, I could hear a lot of noise down the segregation. Someone was getting weighed in badly by the prison staff, right? Getting battered, screaming, everything, right? A day or so late, later, I was waiting to go up on a court case, right? I think it was a couple of days later that I left. Um, in the morning, I heard someone shouting me out the window. I said, yeah, what are you saying? He goes, yeah, it's me, Victor. I said, yeah. He goes, did you hear all that um, the other night? I said, I heard something, but I didn't really get on it to see what it was. Obviously, I had an inkling of what it was. He was still acting the big one, like he ain't what they say he is, and blah, 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 talking to the screws. Whatever, man, allegedly, um, he got weighed in severely by the screws, right? probably for his crimes during that time. If you remember that time, a lot of um, that prison, a lot of those um, block staff went to prison as well. Imagine this, he shot me out the window. He said, Jamie, can you come witness for me? Um, Cause I've got a broken jaw, I've got all these injuries and blah, blah, blah. So I against them and da, 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 da. I said, mate, I never heard nothing. I said, no, I won't be coming witness for you, right? So I shut my window and a little later on, say, I don't know, maybe it might have been a year or two, um, I was reading in the newspapers that in fact he won 20,000 compensation for those injuries that he got down that segregation, right? But where's the justice in there? A man that could go on such a rampage. And you know what? I realised, because that first geezer they beat up and maimed in Wayland that day, right? He was an old, he couldn't even defend himself. He had glasses, he looked like a university graduate or something like that. You can see that cowardly, vulnerability, you're trying, you, you pick targets that you know, or secret desires that obviously that you was um, harboring, covering what you really knew you was at that time. A lot of people, some people do that in prison. They are. Um, rapists, they are sex offenders, they have got deviant minds and that kind of stuff, and make it come out and take it out on others who are on, who are not, and then later on down the line, in fact, it was them that was like that. Go and talk to the psychologist about that. Part one, series, um, Most Evil Man, I kicked that off with him, uh, but much more coming, going live shortly.